Hello and welcome to this final tutorial on extruding 3D text and shapes in After Effects. And while I was doing the last tutorial on Zaxworks and 3D applications, it occurred to me that there is one other option that's available to somebody who has the production premium or the master suite. And they could take advantage of Reprise in Photoshop and actually being able to bring in 3D text and things from Photoshop and animate them in After Effects. In my opinion, this is a workflow that very few people are really going to want to do because it's extremely slow and fairly complicated. However, I want to demonstrate it to you because you might only have the standard Master Suite or Production Premium, no other plugins, and you want to produce some really special bevels at the front of your text or something that looks slightly different that can be done with just the duplication or the shatter effect. And you do get some options with Refuse that you can't really do very well with duplication and shatter. You could certainly do it with Zaxworks and you could certainly do it with a 3D application. But if you don't have those and you really are stuck, then this is an option for you. Okay, so let me demonstrate this to you. First thing we need to do is open up Photoshop and create a new file. So File, New. And I'm going to create one from the Film and Video preset. And I'm going to use PAL, D1, DV, Widescreen, Square Pixels. Click OK. And then what we need to do is create some text. So let's click on the Text tool and I'm going to have blue text and I'm going to make it 150 point and I'm simply going to type text. How imaginative I hear you say. Wow, there you go, he's created text. Right, so now that I have created a text layer and the text layer is selected, Refuse is available to me and it's found under the 3D menu up here. You go 3D, Refuse, and it's for a text layer, so we click text layer and it gives us this message. This text layer must be rasterized before proceeding. Its text will no longer be editable. Rasterize the text and we click yes. So basically we can't change it once it's done. We can't edit the text, whereas in the duplication method when we pre-composed the initial layer we could certainly change it. And also when we did the shatter effect we could choose a different layer. Now that we've done this with Reprise, we're stuck. Just going to move that over here. Okay, so this is the Reprise window and already we have 3D text. I've got my gizmo over here, and if I just click on the text and move it around, you can see that that actually has extrusion. It is true 3D, and there's actually quite a lot you can do with Reprise to make your text look great. These controls are all about manipulating your text. Click home, and it always takes you back to the beginning, and then we've got this one at the top, which is the orbit tool, so we can orbit around our text and see what it's like. Now right at the top we have a whole series of presets, you can play around with all of those. Refuse is particularly known for this blown out front look, but you've got some bevels that can be put onto your text, you've got a blown out front look, um, you can change it here, we've got inflate, so you can actually change the angle of the inflation, which yeah, can make it look slightly weird and different, have a good old play, and then you can actually change the strength of it here as well. So it can go moving in at minus 70 degrees, you can pull it back to zero. So you can play around with these to create some really weird looks. As I say, you've got a bevel over here, which can look quite nice. And again, you've got the inflate and you can actually change the angle of the bevel here. So you can play around with all of these. Sometimes they're a bit strong, so you might want to change the actual strength of the bevel. You can also have all sorts of different bevels to both the front and the back. These are the presets, so you can choose something um, like this. Double click on that and again you can change the, the height of that, you can make it higher or less high. Bear in mind that quite a lot of this was originally created for text, not for video. So you really don't want to overdo it. And then the width. And you can just play around until you get something that really works for you. Often I will just go for a preset and modify it accordingly. So if you've played around with something and it looks awful and you're not happy with it, just go back to another preset and that sort of resets the whole thing. And you can play around with these presets to your heart's content. Okay, a couple of other controls. Obviously with the extrude, that's the bit that goes backwards. You can change the depth here, so you can move that out, move it back. Scale is to do with how thick the end is. So you can make it look really, really wide at the end, or you can get that sort of infinite look by pulling it right in at the bottom. I'll take that back to one. And twist is fun in the fact that it can twist your text around. For some reason my machine seems to be hypersensitive, so you probably want to actually type something in here, say 20 or 60, and you can see that it's twisting the text. These are effects which are very hard to do with the duplication method and with shatter. 
So you are adding options with this that you couldn't do with the normal built-in effects. However, the problem with this, I think you'll find as we move on, is just how long it takes to render. Just going to reduce its extrusion because that's a bit too long for me. Just so that we got 3D text. There we go. Okay, and you can do other bits and pieces. You can bend it, and you can shear it, and what have you. Over here on this side is where you can apply materials. And you can apply materials to all the sides, or to just the front, or just the bevels, if you've got a bevel. So if I click this option here, you can see you've got these bevels. You could apply to just the bevel. So if I click a material to demonstrate, you can see just the bevel has been affected and not the rest of the item. However, what I want to do is I'm going to apply one of these built-in materials to the whole thing. They're pretty rough, some of these. It's bricks. So the whole thing's got bricks. That depth is still a bit long for me, so I'm going to reduce its depth somewhat. Have a look at that, that's better. Um, you can apply your own materials if you have them loaded. The thing about them is that they have to be a particular type to be able to come in here. So if you click load materials and then it says you can download and install more materials by going to and you can go there and do it. I'm not going to do it at the moment. But if you've got your own materials on the machine, do bear in mind that they need to be, from this drop down here, you'll see the only option you have is .p3m. And if they're not .p3m, you can't use those materials. However, I'm sure you could load your own materials and save them with that format without too much trouble. Okay, so we have created some text which is 3D. It doesn't look particularly brilliant. It looks, well, it looks fairly draft to be honest. And you'll see down here we have some scene settings. So we can create lights, we can choose custom views, we've got render settings and we've got mesh quality. Okay, what's all this about? Well, lights. We can actually apply a whole series of default lights. However, note, the lights are set up in Photoshop. You can't use After Effects lights. And therefore, the lighting and the shadows and all the rest of it are defined here in Photoshop, not in After Effects. So whatever lights you add in After Effects are not going to affect your scene. And for me, that's a major downside. But you do have some interesting lights. Click Fire and you get a very interesting look. Or click Purple Phase. And you can see Mardi Gras. You can have all kinds of interesting looks with these lights. But it's another step to be able to get in to change the lights and to change if they actually render shadows or not. So this is not a straightforward workflow. I'm just going to choose uh, hard lights for now so that we can have shadows when we come to it. Views, you've got default views. So you can go left, right, usual bits and pieces, top, bottom. But actually I'm just going to choose a normal view for me, rotate it round, there we go, and render settings, you can decide how you actually want to see the item. Now sometimes you don't want to have an item rendering in your project which can take up an awful lot of resources. You've done your work on it, you know it works, and so what you decide to do is change it to, to a wireframe. Click on wireframe and then it's going to move around ever so quickly and render very quickly. Or alternatively, you can even go less than that, you can have a transparent bounding box. If you know what it's like, and you know that it's all sorted out in your scene, you've got a whole other set of things that you need to worry about, you want to choose one of these really light options, so that it's not using up an awful lot of time redrawing all the time when you know it works. So that's what those render settings are about. I'm going to leave mine at default. And you can have a mesh quality, you can go from draft, better and best. You could go mesh, best quality and it doesn't actually seem to make a huge amount of difference here because at the end of the day it is the renderer that we choose that's going to make the difference to how this looks. But this is good for seeing what it looks like on screen here. Okay, so you can apply all these bits and pieces. Once you've done it, you click OK and you'd have thought that you were ready to go to After Effects. And you kind of are, but there are other steps you will need to take if you want to render shadows out. However, let's assume for the moment that we don't want to render shadows and just do a standard output to After Effects. So we go File, Save, I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Rep, so R-E-P, and I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go back to After Effects, and in After Effects I'm going to double click in my project panel to import an item, I'm going to find Rep, double click to import that, and it gives me an import dialog box. 
It says, how do you want to deal with this? Well, you've got a few options. What you really need to do is have it as a composition. You can't bring it in as footage and actually animate it at all and do any changes. So bring it in as composition. And then the other thing you need to do is make sure you've got this live Photoshop 3D checked. It's really important because that's going to give you options to be able to animate it and change it. So click OK. Here is the composition and we can double click that to open it in our timeline. And the first thing you'll notice is it looks terrible. It looks really awful. And this is because of a couple of reasons. Firstly, the quality has gone down to quarter. And secondly, the text layer unusually has the quality setting changed from best to draft. Now this really doesn't happen very often, but Rafter Effects recognizes that this is a really long rendering process. It is gonna take a long time to work. And if you are able to work in these low quality settings, you'll be able to move fairly quickly through the project. However, there are gonna be times when you need to have it at full so you can actually test what it's like and best quality. And when you've done that, it can take a while before it actually renders out properly for you. Now I'm going to leave mine at Auto and let After Effects choose. And I'm going to show you what you have down here in the timeline. We have a background, we have the text layer, we have a text controller, and we have a camera. What's going on? Well, the background was how I created my file in the first place. If we go back to Photoshop, you see I've actually got a background layer. So it simply brought that into After Effects. You can leave it in there or you can get rid of it. I'm going to leave it in there so I can demonstrate shadows a bit later on. This is the text itself, which we are not going to animate. You don't animate the text, you actually animate the text controller. And if you open up the text controller and go to its properties, you'll see that it's a 3D layer and we can animate Z rotation, start to move it around. Kind of looks a bit rough and sometimes it takes a while to start before it starts moving but you can actually animate it with the controller or if you prefer, I'm actually gonna reset that. Of course, you can choose your camera, hit C to get your unified camera tool and then you can actually animate it with the camera and have a look at it that way. This line here incidentally is actually the null object, it's the controller, so if you don't want to see it, you can just turn the controller layer off and you won't see that null object. So there we go, we've got something that renders reasonably quickly. We can zoom in and it looks reasonably good and it might be a solution that you'll find works for you but if you want to use it with shadows that's when it becomes a real issue because we need to set up a different way for Photoshop to render it and if we want to work with the lights we need to set up those lights in Photoshop okay now the best way of doing this rather than just flipping back to Photoshop is actually to select the text layer and choose Edit, Edit Original, or Control E on the PC, Command E on the Mac, and that takes you back to Photoshop. And when you get to Photoshop, we need to now think about setting up shadows and then setting up the render engine and the lights so that we can work with shadows. As you can see, this is quite a complicated workflow. You need to go to the 3D tab and choose ground plane shadow catcher. So click ground plane shadow catcher and it gives us a message. In Adobe Photoshop CS5, shadows on the ground plane shadow catcher will only be visible for ray traced render quality settings. Huh, okay, what does that mean? Well, ray trace is another way of rendering. You've got your default renderer so that you can see how the images look in After Effects. Well, ray trace is a way of dealing with a 3D item and lights so that the natural way a light would bounce around an object can be reflected in the render. Which means you see sharp shadows where sharp shadows are supposed to be, soft shadows where soft shadows are supposed to be where the light's been somehow obscured or it's shining through something. It's basically a light realistic renderer. The downside of ray trace is that it's exceptionally slow. Ray tracing is very common for 3D applications because it just gives such a superb result. And you'll see a bit later on when we actually use it how great it is. But we actually need to set up the render engine as well. So click OK. And then how do we set up the renderer and how do we set up the lights? Well, you need to open a completely different window, unfortunately. You need to go to Window 3D. 
and when you go to window 3D you get the 3D scene panel come up now with the 3D scene panel right at the top you have the word scene if you click on scene you'll see down here you have render settings but don't get confused because sometimes when you're looking at lights and you've clicked on other layers down here you think how do I get back to the render settings you actually need to be clicking that word scene so let's start off with the render settings here we have the render settings again I'm going to stick with default we've talked about wireframe and bounding boxes and all the rest of it and leave that as default if you're doing a test animation or you're just trying to work out how things will look in 3D you might well have chosen one of the lesser ones and then we can actually look at the quality settings which set up the renderer okay so at the moment we have the interactive painting render engine which I assume is the basic engine for Photoshop and then you have two options for ray trace you have ray traced draft and ray traced final unless you're working with print and you've got lots of time don't use final final takes forever to render and for video and for the work that we're doing ray trace draft is fine and even that is going to take a long time to render so before I choose the render engine I actually want to make sure that my scene is in the right place and that all my lights are set up properly and then I'm going to come back to this so am I happy with how this looks do I need to move it around at all yep I'm happy with that let's say we're happy with that notice you have a series of buttons here the first one says that you can actually rotate the object the second one is for the camera rotation the third one is for mesh rotation the fourth one is for light rotation and the fifth one is to deal with materials so if we're happy it's in the right place and I'm going to leave it as is the next thing we need to do is look at our lights and this is where I feel that Reprise really has got a tremendous weak spot I have to set the lights up here and I have to decide whether they cast shadows I have to decide how intense they are all of it has to be done here and then I'm backwards and forwards between After Effects and Photoshop to try and set these up properly which is not a good solution anyway so click the first light and I can choose what type of light it's going to be so at the moment I've got a hard preset which is what we selected earlier if you remember and what type of light is it? It's infinite of course I can change it and I'm going to change it to a spotlight here's the spotlight its intensity is here and I can change the intensity of that light I can change the colour of that light so I wanted I can make it quite a strong orange click OK and here I can choose whether it casts shadows or not so let's just make this one cast shadows and leave it at that and there are other bits and pieces for setting up the lights but let's just make the other lights at the moment cast shadows and last light cast shadows so I've set them all up so they'll cast shadows now I need to go back to scene and this is the time when I choose the quality drop down to have a little look at what it's like choose ray trace draft and then wait and what you get is this matrix that appears on the screen which is working through the text and trying to give it the best possible look working out how light would naturally have shone on it how it would reflect and the shadows would be created and you can already see the quality of that in comparison it's huge that looks far far better and there's some shadows in the background and what we'll do is we'll save this and we'll go back to After Effects and see if we can make any changes there now that took quite a long time and this is where I get a bit frustrated with this method is it just takes a long time in Photoshop and when you get back to After Effects it's also a very slow process anyway we've done that let's go file save and let's go back to After Effects and then we have to wait for it to pick up on the change so that we can actually see the difference and that took about a minute or so before it actually picked up on the fact that a change had taken place and now I have to wait probably about the same again for the actual rendering in After Effects to happen I'll cut the time out again and there we have an updated look in After Effects it's not how I want it to look so I actually need to make changes so therefore I need to go to my text controller and let's say I want to push it back in Z space oh dear my controls are going to get really slow let's just type in a figure let's try minus 
minus 300 but you can see that it's trying to update it already it's slowing down my interface and this is just where it becomes almost impossible to use I can't get there to type it in it's trying to re-render it at the same time and it's a bit of a nightmare to be honest so minus 300 hit return and then just wait and wait and wait so this is why After Effects would bring it in at quality a quarter and it would take the text layer to draft because you can just see that any changes you make take forever and you need to move it around and check it all out with those things at a quarter and at draft just so that you can get a feel for how it looks you can move it to the right place you can scrub bits and pieces and actually make it look exactly how you want it to look and then when you're finally ready and you've got it in about the right place that's when you go back to full or auto and you go back from draft to full quality otherwise as I say you're just going to be spending hours and hours and it'll eventually pick it up and take time so you can see that the process is actually a really slow process it's really tough to work at you do need to work at the lowest possible quality settings that you can while you're trying to sort it out and only go to high quality right at the very last moment so you have to ask yourself it's a trade-off do you want that bevel do you want that puffy look do you want to be able to get nice and close is this the only solution that you've got in which case you have to put up with the time problems and you have to work until the last possible moment in the lowest possible quality only ever doing one frame here one frame there when you absolutely must because you're going to wait for minutes to try and see how it looks and then you can see well the shadows haven't worked out I haven't set the scene up properly something's gone wrong um, it takes an awful lot of work and you can see why I don't personally use this one but then again I'm very fortunate I have Zach's works plugin well I hope that just explains Repuse for you the fact that you can use it I'm sure you can become expert with it the more you use it you must keep working always in the lowest possible quality settings and with this button clicked at draft so that you can actually move things around and get an idea of how it's going to look until the last possible moment and then you can blow away your customers with some beautiful looking text that took you a lot longer than if you'd used another method but may look a little better well my name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this at the very least informative if not hugely useful and that you'll be able to look at Repuse get a feel for how it works and see if it's something that you can use or need to use in your workflow and go from there thank you for watching mm -hmm.